Hey, Brian Losey here with Priority One Fishing. Let's talk about ice lines. It's early ice, mid-November. That ice is starting to get thicker and everybody's getting excited. So let's get your gear in top-notch condition. Now we're gonna talk about three primary types of line. Uh, fluorocarbons, nylon monofilaments, and braided lines. And I guess we could throw in a fourth one there. How about copolymers, uh, fluorocarbon coated nylons? Now all of these lines will offer something different for you as you're going into the ice season. Uh, nylon lines, characteristics of a nylon, uh, stretch immediately. Uh, often they'll have uh, stretch exceeding 25 or 28 uh, percent. They're also very buoyant. Standard diameters, so a six pound test is a six pound test, eight pound test is eight pound test, and so forth. You get into a fluorocarbon line, you start to see some changes. Now, fluorocarbon line is a different material entirely. It is what they call a polyvinyl lighting fluoride. Now, this line has uh, characteristics that give it density. It's a uh, 1.75 specific gravity. So it's going to sink. Instead of being buoyant, it's going to help those jigs get a little bit deeper. It also has a very controlled stretch energy uh, uh, elasticity limits on these lines. Now with that it's pluses, pluses and minuses. I mean uh, many of you may have experienced a lot of that slinky effect on your reels when you're using them in open water seasons. Well this is going to do the same thing through the ice as well. So precondition those lines, pre-stretch those lines, those fluorocarbons. You can relax them very easily and become very efficient for ice fishing. Uh, fluorocarbon lines also do not absorb water whereas nylons do. So when you're getting into those cold temperatures and you're you know, fighting the elements as much as you are at any other season, then you don't want that to happen. You definitely don't want to absorb water. You don't want those knot integrity, uh, those knots to be compromised. And uh, you'll also see clarity of this line uh, give you some advantages as well, especially in really clear lakes. This line has the closest refraction property to that of water. Light will go right through it where you get a little bit of a sheen with the nylon. And yes, it may make a difference. Ultimately, I think diameter is going to make the biggest difference. And that's where also fluorocarbon can come into play. Fluorocarbon lines will have a slightly smaller line diameter for their knot strength. You get a six pound test fluorocarbon. It is going to be about four pound test diameter comparative to a nylon. So you have some advantages with that. Now braided lines. Braided lines have really exploded on the market and likewise for ice season as well. A lot of ice specialty braided lines. They'll have coatings that will prevent icing, uh, prevent you from bringing water up into the guides and causing freezing, uh, freezing problems. But most of it is the construction of the braid that uh, either helps or hurts this. Braided lines to look for for ice fishing, look at some of those lines that are hydrophobic, that are really tightly wound, eight thread weave lines. Uh, you'll see that often with, uh, say, Suffix. Uh, Suffix 832 is a good example of that. Also incorporates Gore-Tex into that line, which is going to give you some water repelling uh, properties as well. And uh, those eight thread weaves, they, they're very, very tight uh, micro threads, eight micro threads, wrap 32 times every inch essentially is the formula. And with that, you get a nice consistent radial construction on that line all the way through from uh, point A to point B. And, 0% stretch. I mean, these lines are incredibly sensitive. Uh, an 8-inch fish feels like a brick dropped on it. So you can use that for really deep water applications when you have to set that hook on a lake trout at 60 or 70 feet. You move that rod tip 8 inches, that hook moves 8 inches. Also, the diameter, extreme diameter on these lines is also what makes it very popular because you can still use the small reels and get an incredible amount of break strength. A uh, 20-pound test braided line is only a 6-pound test equivalent. Um, that way you can fish, uh, say, even a 15 or a 10-pound braided line and be able to get into a 3 or a 4-pound test uh, equivalent. How about fishing for lake trout with a 3-pound test diameter line with an 8-ounce jig at 80 feet of water and still being able to feel it? Those are some advantages you have with the braided line. Downside, braided lines are not very abrasion resistant. Now, uh, because of the 0% stretch pri uh, primarily, you pull those lines out at tension, hit a sharp object with it, they have a tendency to cut right through. So, utilizing fluorocarbons or nylons as leader material on the end of that braided line has become very popular and can help you increase your success rates when targeting very toothy fish or when you need to get that, uh, that extra abrasion resistance around the hole. So fluorocarbon lines, braided lines, nylon lines, let's talk about that fourth one really quick. Uh, fourth line is a copolymer line. Now copolymers will often be multiple blends of nylon or have fluorocarbon coatings on top of nylons. So you can kind of get the best of both worlds if you're looking for invisibility, but you don't want the density. You're looking for that buoyant line that helps the fall rate on those uh, finicky bluegill or finicky crappie. Sometimes that descent is all that it takes to get those fish to strike. Too fast of a fall, like a fluorocarbon dragging a tungsten jig down or a tungsten jig uh, just plummeting through the water can often take you out of the fish if they're really, really shut down. So 
take a look at some of those lines, see if that helps you out a little bit. Um, get those ice lines on those reels, get them ready to go for the season because it's upon us, and get out there and catch some fish. Thank you.